so welcome back to my youtube channel so this is part 2 on uh, developing a multi tenant tag uh, for creating dynamic tenants by using a tenant micro service okay so we are already following this template and we we are we have just reached to slide number 13 okay so our existing repo has three micro services and we are going to make a tenant microservice to generate uh, dynamic tenants so for this we have to uh, create i'm just removing this file for this i am going to make a tenant controller okay and uh, i should be adding this path in ts config okay okay so i'll be adding this path so uh, later on we will configure this okay so in order to create a uh, tenant we have to create an endpoint to create a tenant so uh, i will be making a post api okay i will uh, quick fix all the imports okay i'll just fix this lint issues for a while so here you are able to see that I have created a post API okay and uh, we will take the name of tenant okay and we will directly call the create tenant uh, service okay so we will make a method inside the service where we are able to create a tenant but before that uh, I am going to create an abstract class so I am going to make an abstract entity dot ts file okay and uh, it it will have an primary generated column and created at and updated at fields so i will just import all the required fields okay and just quick fix all the lint issues okay so this abstract entity will is having an abstract class so this is a base class that we are going to use across all other entities okay so why we require this so the basic purpose is to reduce the boilerplate code so that these fields are reusable across all the entities and we don't have to write this thing again and again okay so we are going to create a tenant entity here so i will be making a tenant entity file here okay and just ignore the schema part okay i will extend abstract entity here I need to import it so as the abstract entity already has the id column we don't require it here okay so this is how the things are beautifully architectured in nestjs that's why i like this framework that uh, every uh, method has a proper way that you are able to define the things and it has support to most of the orms uh, most of the latest tech based ORMs like Prisma and type ORM and um, SQLize and all those ORMs okay no worries so uh, we are going to add this class validators and class transformer okay so why we require the class validators as you you know that when we create a post API we will require some uh, body instance here okay so we need to validate that the incoming request has uh, the, the validations passed okay so we will create tenant dto for this so the full form of dto dto is data type object okay so we will add the validators here so uh, we are just going to accept the name field in our create tenant dto and uh, here are the validator decorators added so the decorators are such that the name should not be empty the name should be string it should not have any numerical parts or any alpha numerical character the minimum length should be one for creating any tenant and maximum length should be five means it, it can accept up to five characters like a b c d e that's it so these uh, things are like beautifully architectured and like we have a simple way of, of uh, decor uh, of using the decorators okay now we are going to make this create uh, tenant service 
ओके बट बिफोर दैट वी नीड टू इनिशियलाइज अवर वॉट वी कैन से डेटा सोर्स ऑप्शन ओके सो दिस डेटा सोर्स ऑप्शंस वी हैव ऑलरेडी क्रिएटेड अवर डेटा सोर्स इन ओ आर एम कन्फिक डॉट टी एस फाइल ओके सो वी हैव टू इनिशियलाइज इट सो आई एम जस्ट फिक्सिंग ऑल द इम्पोर्ट्स फर्स्ट ओके सो वी हैव द डेटा सोर्स ऑप्शन एंड ओके सो वी हैव इन्वोक्ड अवर डेटा सोर्स लाइक दिस सॉरी या and after that we we will be creating a create tenant uh, what you can say method inside our service okay we will be invoking this tenant entity from tenant entity and we don't have schema so i will be uh, i will remove that thing okay no worries you you, you should ignore these things as of now okay so i think things are going good okay so what this create tenant service will have it will initialize a data source first okay if not initialized it will create a tenant name okay uh, so our underlying schema will be like tenant underscore name okay and this is the main oracle query which will we, we are using to create any schema as a part of tenant name so we will execute this raw query and we will save all our tenant information in our uh, tenant entity and we will save it to our data, uh, database okay after that uh, we need to configure our tenant module so it looks something like this but after we have uh, marked all dependencies and all the things okay it will look something like this okay i'm just quick fixing all the lint issues okay so how the tenant module will act is like it will have a static method it will take the incoming schema it will initialize a data source here okay and it will uh, it will be injected in as a part of a tenant module okay so after that we are going to create an app module dot ts file here okay so why why this configuration is important because we have our definitions of orm config and we need to inject all those things inside our application so how we will do, do that so the configuration is a part of uh, the process uh, that's it okay so inside our app module what we will have like we will uh, keep the public tenant as default tenant okay i will go through why we have this things in place okay this it will uh, take public tenant as a uh, default data source and after we run our tenant service it will create dynamic tenants okay so one last thing is left is to create okay we are going to create one orm config file here okay so for our tenant we we will have some separate orm config file here okay this quick fixes are sometimes okay so uh this is how like orm config will look okay so inside our uh, main orm config that we have in our root level uh outside apps we are having orm config file okay there we need to add the tenant entity so we will add our tenant entity here okay just i am quick fixing this thing okay i think the things are going good okay uh okay now we are going to create a script 
okay inside our source to run all the migrations for all the tenant okay so i'm just quick fixing this thing okay so what this script will do is like it will initiate the data source options first okay from the information schema it will pick all the tenant names okay so let me execute this in my uh, discovery db okay so in our previous video we are already using this discovery db okay so what this information schema ta basically has so it has the information of all the tenants okay here you are able to see so inside my schemas as you are able to see that i am having multiple tenants and by default a public tenant is initialized okay so from here we are going to pick all the tenants okay and whichever tenants match uh, this kind of uh, regular expression we are going to initialize it then we will run the migrations okay so what what migrations are we going to run okay so we already have this uh, uh, this new entity file which was previously initialized uh, you can refer my old videos uh, part 1 video where i have initialized the new entity for public schema now after we run migration the new entity should be initialized to all our newly created tenants okay so i hope the things are clear till now okay the configuration was pretty straight forward now we are going to start our tenant service okay so the basic command is nest start tenant uh, i will be adding a watch mode okay so it will start my tenant okay one thing i think is left okay inside the main module we should have the app module and uh, by default let us assign a port of 3009 okay so my nest to my so my tenant service is active now and we can add a path of tenant something like this okay so uh, i hope the things are clear till now now we will open postman okay inside the body we have something like this and uh, let us create a tenant named sandeep but before that we need to make sure that the databases are common in okay in both the um, files okay okay now we have successfully started our application we will be creating uh, this thing but i am not able to hit this thing let us try getting a get api so we are not able to find this specific thing okay 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 my bad the app module should be initialized from this here okay so my app module will have the tenant module tenant module will have the tenant controller and it will follow a hierarchy so from get service we are getting a hello world i will be injecting a post service so tenant sandeep is successfully created okay so i will just refresh this and here you are able to see that tenant sandeep is successfully created but when i open it and uh, see the tables there are no tables created so for that purpose uh, inside the package json we have to create a migration script for running all the tenants okay so i think that too i have provided a inside my template so we have to create a migration script and should verify that this path is there okay yeah 
now what i will do i will just run this script yarn migrate tenants okay okay so here you are able to see that for tenant sandeep which is a newly created tenant a migration is has uh, is like recently a migration is has run and uh, you are able to see that it has applied all the things uh, from this migration file so it will pick the schema from uh, query runner connection dot options it will uh, apply the tenant name here and it will run the migration entity for uh, its own tenant okay so once i refresh this here you are able to find that i have a new entity uh, what you can say new entity been migrated to my new tenant okay and the uh, column names are same as we have uh, provided in our migration file and all our tenant related information is stored in our tenants db so here you are able to see that i have an id created at updated at and the name of tenant been uh, generated okay so i am creating one more tenant oh my service is down so i will start my tenant service so my one more tenant is created and once i refresh this thing so one more tenant named meta is created so i hope uh, you have enjoyed this video and uh, you are getting into new dynamics of achieving multi tenant databases and uh, you are able to run multiple services at a time you are able to achieve some microservice architecture so i hope this level of advancement will help you grab new concepts will ideate you more on learning more and more things okay so uh, thanks uh, for watching my video